Welcome to episode 232 of the official Game Stitch podcast. I'm Ryan Walton. As always, wait, Dan's not here. <laughs> we have a we have a uh, a new co-host, new old co-host today. Uh, the one and only Hoffman Show, aka Gerald. Hey, everybody. Uh, you were nice enough to step up in Dan's absence. He's out. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter, especially Dan at shirtless Dan, you'll realize that Dan had a uh, event to attend last night, and then at that event got incredibly drunk. And I think that event was not at his home, so I think he was forced to stay somewhere. Um, he knew he wouldn't be on today, so uh, he had made arrangements already, and uh, we knew Gerald was going to be on. But I do want to I want to bring your attention to one of the tweets that he sent out last night. Okay. Uh, we were talking about Fortnite. And we've we've we made it clear we're going to get Fortnite. Um, I know our good friend Garrett is going to get Fortnite. Um, maybe Thomas will get it too, and all of us are getting it. Another friend Howard. Everybody's getting Fortnite. But there's like five or six different editions for Fortnite. We've been talking back and forth about which ones we're going to get, and uh, just for a little context. And so here's Dan's tweet. Going with the fifty nine ninety nine edition. As an aside, I'm fucking wasted right now. Doesn't change the fact that you guys are awesome and I can fill my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the tweet Dan decided to send last night at uh, eight hours ago. So that's when I was because he said there was a small chance he'd be on. That was when I knew that he wouldn't be on. Yeah, see, I've never been drunk, so I can never tell if I can fill my teeth or not. Well, it got me thinking: Can I just normally fill my teeth? Yeah, so you start messing around with your tongue and then chomping on right. it. Right. And I'm not sure where it gets weird is did he mean he can feel like his actual teeth or he can like feel like touch and feel his teeth? That's where I don't have enough information. Maybe he can feel his heartbeat through his teeth. That stuff happens sometimes, but I can feel my teeth. Like I think I'm aware that my teeth are there, mm-hmm. but my teeth don't have feeling. Yeah, I have two fake teeth. <clears throat> where I had them pulled because where I had baby teeth still, and uh-huh. I can still feel like I can tell the difference as I'm touching them or when I'm biting on stuff. But you don't just feel the difference when you're sitting there. Not unless I like open and close my mouth to rub my tongue across it, or I'm eating something. And, and see, I don't know if that's that's where I don't have the information with him. I don't know if he means he can like actually reach up and feel them because I can always do that. Yeah. Or if he like he feels. Like, as if it's his skin, he can just feel the air on his teeth. With him, I have no idea. (laughs) With the amount of alcohol he consumed, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Because clearly it was a lot. He had a good time. Yeah. And then he sent us a text saying, hey, I might be on tomorrow. Also, I'm wasted. (laughs) (laughs) Which is another key indication he would not be on today. Yeah. So you had to pull me from the bench, third string back up. You know, sometimes... The bench will win you a game. Yeah, I know. You never know. If you're not getting any points off the bench, it's tough, especially if your starters are having an off night or off morning. Yeah, I just play a backup manager. I just manage the game, let the defense take care of it. That seems like a uh, like a basketball coaching sim. I'm surprised they don't have that. I know like, like soccer will, will get into like the manager mode. More so than you don't see it in a whole lot in deep in Madden and, and uh, NBA. Yeah, I think it was the NFL head coach of one year did that. Oh, yeah, day. I remember that. Yeah, they did yeah. That. But that's like by the same guys that made like rugby and stuff, I think. Mm-hmm. Those games that are like sports games but really kind of suck. Yeah, people got excited at first and they found out you couldn't really play the pl- as the player and they decided, to, uh, no, I'm not playing this. I don't want to be a, a head coach, general manager. I want to actually get in there and and run for 500 yards in a game and throw 18 touchdowns. Yeah, I think when I was still at GameStop when that came out, and I feel like everybody was talking about that game, how amazing it was going to be. And then when they came out and realized it was like front office stuff Mm -hmm. and head coach stuff, they were like, I don't want to do that. 
Yeah, I know in some and editions then, of Madden after that, you can still do some of that GM role, and but you yeah. can still play but here and there. But I'm talking, I want to go real deep. I want to go full-on setting the concession prices, designing the stadium. Like, I want to go full front office on this thing. Decide if you want to change your jersey colors and if you want Everything. to move your team. To change the jerseys for, like, certain games and do promotions for home stuff. And, oh, if I want to give out towels to everybody, how much does that cost? Yeah. I want to go full on front office manager. Do you want nine cheerleaders or do you want 11 cheerleaders? Exactly. What's the what's the cost associated with that? What's the travel for us to go play this team? Mm-hmm. How much do I have left after that? I want cap space. I want all that. Are we going southwest? Are we going? Oh, we're always going southwest. <laughs> we only go southwest because I can't. I don't want spoiled players. I don't want them to. You know, I don't want first class to even be a, a discussion we have to have. <laughs> no one will want to play for your team then. I want transparency. <laughs> That's true. But if we win, which we won't. Yeah, you'll probably have to money ball it, just get a bunch of players and right. like, statistically do well. Also, with the money I would save on things like Southwest and having Taco Bell do the, the, the food. <laughs> Taco Bell. The money I would save doing that would allow me to have a better facility. Right. And maybe so and, better and, for the, and pay the players more. Sure, yeah, I could pay. I don't mind paying for a player that's going to come out and make shit happen. And then I can just walk back to the locker room at any point and grab a gordita yep. or a Doritos Locos taco. Sounds like a win-win for me. So I downloaded, There's a, Sony has put everything, an entire store on sale pretty much. They have their E3 sale going. Uh, at the time of this recording, they also have a flash sale going. So I jumped on there and I kind of uh, went through there and, to see if there's anything I wanted. I downloaded a couple of VR titles. I got Waddle, and I can't remember what the other one I got was. Yeah, I've seen a couple of the games on there. It was actually some of the free free games they gave away before. Yeah, I saw that too. A lot of PlayStation Plus stuff on there for deep discounts, but not free. Mm-hmm. And then I also picked up Koi, which is one I had looked at before. Yeah, I remember you talking I, about that. I think it's normally ten dollars nine ninety nine, and I think it was on there for like two bucks or something. Uh, it's basically like a puzzle platformer. You're a koi fish. You have to find other koi fish, take them to a flower that's the same color as them. And once you do, it lights up and kind of unlocks the rest of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. It's pretty neat. I'm glad that I got it for two bucks. I played through it fairly quickly. Um, I sat down one night and played it for probably 20 minutes. And then I came back through and played it for maybe an hour and I finished the game. Damn. So for ten dollars, I might be disappointed. Now it's the kind of game that has some collecting aspects to it, so they expect you to go back and play it again. Yeah. To get all the stuff, but it's kind of got a real like Zen feeling about it. The music is kind of nice. It's very simple. Uh, you you use two buttons for the entire game, and one of those is the analog stick. So mm-hmm. you swim with that. Uh, there is no button buttons for speed or anything like that. And then when you go over the flowers, you hit circle. Oh, wow. And that's it. Yeah, it's very simple. It's very. I don't want to think right now, but I still want to play a game. See, I don't mind games like that if you just go in there, just do a couple things, and you can get out. Yeah, it's got that feeling. It was really, um, like I said, for the price, I thought it was worth it. I don't know if everybody would like it, but it was a very calming experience, and um, I enjoyed that. Uh, jumped into a little three on three freestyle basketball last night. Oh, damn. Yeah, I didn't play very, very long because I've been out of the game for a bit. So I didn't even know about these, like, town segments and things like that. Mm-hmm. I hadn't even seen any of that stuff yet. They've really added a lot to this game. Yeah, they did. Uh, the other problem I had is when I jumped in a match, I got my ass handed to me. Yeah, they, they pl- everyone, they're a lot better than they were months ago. Everyone's been playing, right? Yep. <laughs> no, nobody took a break, apparently. Yeah, then they level their players up as you're leveling them up. I mean, they get better and their skills get better. So I got torched. I was waiting. So I, I jumped in chat last night um, with Howard and uh, our friend of the show, Thomas Barfield, joined, and we were going to try to play Minecraft together. Mm. But we hadn't played Minecraft in so long that I had missed like the last six updates or something. Oh, she had to update everything. So Thomas was updating his. I was updating mine. I think Howard had to update his. So we ended up being able to play that. We jumped in NHL. We played a game, did some shootouts together. That was fun. Um, and then at the end of the night, Howard and I jumped in and played some Nidhogg against each other. At this point, he was like already falling asleep. <laughs> As so he normally he was does. In 
Yeah, he was in and out of consciousness while we were playing. And I don't think he ever grasped the full concept of Nidhogg because he was so tired. Yeah. So on Nidhogg, you want to you want to kill each other and then run towards the exit. What he would do is just kill me and then wait for me to respawn and try to kill me again. So he was treating it like a fighting game and never advancing towards his goal. Well, he never really um, plays games to do what you're supposed to do. He just does shit to do shit. He does shit to have fun, yeah. which I appreciate. Um, and he's been hot and heavy in Horizon. So has Dan. Dan's been balls deep in Horizon playing every night. Um, and it's make it's Jones and me. They both send me some pictures. It's Jones and me to get back in that that world. Yeah, so, I need to I'm get in there. To, yeah, I'm excited to dive back into Horizon. I've played uh, more Rocket League, obviously, and I did a little more VR stuff too. I'm really I'm really feeling VR lately. That's about it for me. A lot of games, but a lot of the same stuff and a lot of really short experiences. I think I played a little more Little Nightmares. Uh, I just got to get a plan together to beat some stuff because jumping around is driving me crazy. Because mm-hmm. you can never get your foot in the in the door and to play an actual game the whole way through. Like, well, I, I I don't know how much time I'm gonna have. I don't. Some games I want to play. I don't care to play Little Nightmares during the day. It's kind of a creepy game. It's got a vibe about it. I like to play it at night. Yeah, some games have, like, if I know I'm going to really dive into it, I'm going to spend two or three hours in, and some games, like, if I only have, like, an hour, I'll just jump and play some of the easy games I can just get a couple minutes in and get out. Like, Minecraft, if I play Minecraft, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend hours in that. I don't want to jump in for 13 minutes and get out. Yeah, see, I agree with you on that. Now, I've got to get back to Minecraft. Long-time listeners of the show know how much time I spend in Minecraft. Yes, we spent a lot of time in there. And I want to get back, but I can't commit that kind of time right now. I wish you guys would get back because I still need to finish my little thing I was doing in your in your world and all so your. So what worlds. I've got to do, I've got to I've got to polish off some of these games I've got outstanding, so that I can jump back in there and give that the time it deserves. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, if any of our listeners want to jump into Minecraft, I actually have a whole world that's in levels where you can build your own houses and everything like that. So if you want to jump in mine, just let me know. If you want to build something. I know Thomas is big into Minecraft, so we might try to set up a, a community night and I'll get in and, and play. Like I said, we wanted to play last night. I, I am fully updated now. Okay, good. So I should be able to jump in. Did you stay with your free-to-play library this week, or did you jump into anything else? I did the normal free-to-play, and actually I've been trying to finish up Fallout 4, the Nuka World DLC. So I've been playing that, and that's a whole other thing that changes the game a lot. For me, it changed the game a lot, because you actually are in charge of a raider gang and you have to go and convince your settlement in the Commonwealth to either join your rate, either supply you or you're going to go in there and kill all your settlers or the, or you're going to get them to leave and you're let your raiders take over. So a lot of the settlements you have out there, you're, you're, if you haven't built up you're going to lose all your settlers there and everything you built up on that because your raiders are going to come in. I don't like that. No, I don't like it, but luckily for me, I had a bunch of settlements that I didn't have anybody there because I just didn't like right. the location. So I just went to a couple settlements and just sent like one person to these random settlements that didn't have nobody there. And then I used those as the uh, the little raider camp to take over. I just went, hey, you got to leave so my raider camp could come in here. I don't like that. You spend all the time building your, your settlement up and then to tear it down. <clears throat> yeah. I don't I don't like that. So luckily I had a bunch. I mean, because you have to do eight eight of them to get a trophy, and I'm at seven right now. I have to do one more. But you can't do them all at once. Like, you keep on going back and forth. You have to give it some time. And then they supply yeah. you. So as you're, if you have a, a raider cam and you're going out doing stuff, you go back to the the raiders' home bases, whoever the little gang leaders are. You go to there and they have a, a loot box, you can say, say. And they have weapons and money, coin, uh see, your caps, your materials, you name it, they have it in the box, and you can get all kinds of good stuff in there. So it's like another little chest. So as you have all eight of those going, you would have stuff in all eight of them that you could actually go pick up? Well, it's not in the actual Commonwealth. It's actually at the Raider Gang's headquarters. Oh, so, so they're not at each one. Yeah, no, it's because the Nuka World is where the headquarters are. There's uh, five different places. And you have to divide it between the three gangs. So I have two and one, two and one, and one and the other. And the one I have just by itself is the one you actually have to go kill their leader later on because they turn on everybody. Interesting. So I'm doing pretty good. Then there's a lot of uh, rare uh, exosuits, or I mean, the 
the mech suits. Yeah, what are those called? I forget what they're called. Uh, power armor suits. Power armor, yeah. Yeah, so there's like nu- the Nuka World ones, and there's a bunch of the XL1 that are really, really hard to find in the regular game. So they have a bunch of full full of suited ones out there. But you have to do all kinds of stuff to get to get to them, though. And there's a, a Nuka World one that you have to run around the whole map and grab uh, these little power adapters to put on this huge board. There's like, I think 27 of them. So you have to go around and find 27 and put on this board. It'll turn on and you can open up the, the glass case to get the, the the ultimate power armor suit, I guess is what's going to be. I haven't looked online to see anything. I don't like when I play games like that, I don't want to look online and get spoiled on what stuff is. I don't think I'll ever, I love Fallout 3 so much. And then Fallout New Vegas lost me a little bit and I just don't, something about Fallout 4 never clicked fully with me. See, I was opposite. I didn't like Fallout Three, and, I, and so I didn't even play New New Vegas. And then Fallout Four, I just I don't know why, it just grabbed me right away, and I fell in love with the game. Just played it nonstop. I'm afraid I'll never go back. You probably won't. I mean, there's a lot of games you do that. You'll go in there and play, and then never go back. With me, some games I do that, and, but most of the games, if I like it, I'm gonna go all the way through and try to get 100 percent complete. And at this point, I think I would have to start over. I just don't think I'm familiar enough with what I was doing or my plan or mm-hmm. even how to play. Yeah, because, I mean, if you do the, uh, add all the updates and all the DLC, it does change the game a lot. Because if, you if you're used to playing one way, then you go in there, you had all the DLCs on there, you're, you're going to get lost. It's best to not use any of the DLCs, play the game, do one, then add, after you beat it, add the one DLC, beat that one, add the second DLC. Because if you try to load all in there, it just ruins the game. Yeah, I would have to start over, and I probably will never go back to that world, which is crazy considering how much I loved Fallout 3. Well, you did pretty, you got the, pretty far in there anyway when you were playing, so if you go back, you're going to be lost to what you even did. Yeah, that sort of thing. Like, I've got settlements, and I don't know what I was. my plan was there. And, and then if you had any companions, where you left the companions off at? Because sometimes you'll send a companion to a random place, and you forgot where they went, and you have to go to all your settlements to find them. There'd be no telling. Yeah. I don't remember anything about that. I'll, the only settlements I even remember are the one at the drive-in and the main one you get. Yeah, uh, sanctuary, and then uh, sanctuary. Yeah. So I don't even remember, and I had like you know seven or eight of them. I don't remember. It's chaos. Yeah, because I, I think I, I had the. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say I lost uh, dog meat once for about two weeks. Like I played and played and played, and I could not find dog meat, and then I finally found him. He was just at some ran, random settlement. I have uh, the Red Rocket right down the road from Sanctuary, mm-hmm. but I don't think I did anything there, really. Yeah, I don't have anything there. That's where I sent one of the random settlers there just to let the Raider gang take over that one, which I made a mistake on that because they're always going into Sanctuary trying to raid that one. And I spent some time on uh, the Old Castle or whatever that thing mm-hmm. is, where the Murloc Queen is or whatever that thing was. Yeah, I got that one looking really nice. Yeah, I walled up the places that are knocked down. Yeah, me too. Um, and kind of, that's the one I spent some time in. You know, I've got some beds and stuff. It, it actually came came out pretty nice, but I just don't remember my plan. I don't remember what I was trying to do. Uh, so if I did play, I would probably have to start over, and I don't think I want to invest that kind of time back in it again when it just didn't ever grab me yeah, I just, to start with. See, I decided to jump back in that because I thought in E3 that they were going to announce they were going to do more stuff to it, so I figured I'd just jump in there and try to get more done on that before they added some more DLC or they're going to add more things to that game. But it looks like they're not going to, so once I finish this, I'll probably be done with that game. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you not going for the Platinum, are you? Oh, no, I am. Oh, you are? All I have to do is I got only have, like, I think, maybe four left on the Nuka World trophies to get the Platinum. Gotcha. And you got the, uh, you did all the stuff on the normal? Oh, yeah, I, all that and all the other DLCs, 100% on those. So you've had the platinum already. Oh yeah, I've had the platinum long uh, last year. I think I didn't realize you platinum that game. Oh yeah, I platinum that one and all, all the DLC except for Nuka World. Gotcha. In case this is your first time joining us, this is the official Game Stitch podcast. Welcome. A couple best friends get together. We talk all about video game and video game culture, um, basically whatever we want to talk about. Uh, that's the beauty of it being our show. No rules. It posts every Monday, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, podcast services around the world. If for whatever reason there's a service you listen to and we're not on there, hit us up, podcast at gamestitch.com, and we'll see what we can make happen for you. 
Um, Besties. Remember, we say when we say 6 a.m., that's when it posts on GameStitch.com. Some of the services are a little delayed. The, the quickest way to make sure you get the podcast is to subscribe on whatever service you listen to. You typically get it before the feed. Um, so if you'll just subscribe, you can get it faster that way. If you want to support this show, head over to patreon.com forward slash game stitch. Toss us a couple bones on there. We got cool rewards. We got cool goals. Uh, we'll be revamping those really soon. So if you want to hold off, we understand that too. Hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll have the new goals up, or the new rewards up, and we're just going to change some things, restructure. Um, but, you know, mostly try to make it more user friendly for you guys. And uh, we've got some new ideas that we want to want to put in there. Remember, this show will always be free. So if this is your thing and you're worried about it going paid, not going to happen. Uh, this show will be free forever as far as we know. Um, unless some giant corporation like Walmart comes in, buys us out, starts charging, puts us on a shelf somewhere. Uh, unless something like that happens, uh, this podcast will always be free. So pa- patreon.com forward slash game stitch. You can see what we have up now. You can... Uh, just just be sure that uh, that you check it out and, and know that even if we change the rewards, uh, we'll probably keep the first few tiers pretty close to the same because we don't want to take away anything that people are already subscribed to. Forever. Let's, ju- let's jump into this thing. Yes, please. This first story, I'm interested to get your thoughts on this because um, I know how you fall on one side of this, but not how you fall on, on the whole bigger picture. So, Rocket League is going to be televised on NBC. You heard me right. NBC. Like like NBC. Mm-hmm. Like regular TV. Like primetime TV. Sort of. Kind of. Um, you know, esports is really... It's really caught on the last few years. We've seen ESPN show it. Um, we've even seen uh, TBS show it with the Street Fighter Tournament. Uh, ESPN's done some Heroes of the Storm stuff. I think they've done some Dota stuff. So, you've, you've seen... You've seen these networks take a chance on on some of these, mm-hmm. but you haven't seen a big prime time like you haven't seen NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox. You haven't seen them step up and and take any interest in this. Um, but it would it would appear that uh, we're going to get a shot at it. Sonics released a uh, press release showing a partnership with NBC Sports Group. The network will broadcast a two v two tournament with a hundred thousand dollar prize pool. This summer, the tournament will begin with a regional online qualifying matches that are organized through Face It Esports, um, and the later rounds will be aired on NBC on the NBC Sports app. So when I first read the story, I was like, "Of course, NBC bury it in some app that nobody uses." Yeah, yeah, because I know you got a ton of users on your NBC Sports app that'll be on there watching Rocket League. But then as you read a little more, you realize the Grand Finals, which will place t- take place August 26th and 27th, will be broadcast on NBCSN, the network's TV channel, and in the United States. And in uh, UK, Germany, Australia, Australia, and Latin America, it will be on Sci-Fi Channel. So that's a pretty big deal. You know, just watching the, the Stanley Cup Final, um, they're, they're putting those games on NBCSN. Yeah. Those, even weren't, those weren't even on big NBC. Um, so... I, you know, a lot of the NASCAR races are on NBCSN. Like they show big events over there. They treat it kind of like Fox does with FS1. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're they put big stuff over there because they're trying to grow that that brand. And uh, it's interesting. I don't know what this will do. If they're trying something. New, they're trying something new. They need. They're losing viewers. Every all the shows on there are not as popular as they used to be. So let's try to get somewhere else. Add a new marketplace. Let's get some new viewers in here. Let's see if we can do something new. I think it's a good idea. So let's. I want to talk about esports in general, and then we'll circle back around to this story, and I'll okay. I'll talk about why I think Rocket League is so good for the, for this. And I actually think they understand that, which is rare when you're talking about suits. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually think they understand. So, what's your stance on esports on TV or esports in general? I think it's good. I like it. Uh, I'm not, I don't watch it. I don't follow it or anything my brother does my brother's like all about the teams and he follows teams on twitter and is constantly watching them play and stuff i i don't i'd rather play the game than watch people play but i think it's good it's showing that you can do something besides just playing video games when we were little it was like quit playing video games you're never going to amount to nothing but now you're showing people are making a living off of just playing video games and then now it's competitive so you're 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 getting rewarded for being good at something finally have you have you ever watched any of any sport? 
Uh, not really. Uh, I've watched like a couple like highlights of people playing and how like crazy they get and they're mad and throwing controllers when they lose and they're pacing back and forth. And my brother, sh- like when I went to visit him, he showed me like a couple of the teams that they're as they were playing, how they strategize everything as they're talking to each other and how they game plan stuff out, but never really watched the whole match. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've dabbled a little bit. I've talked about it. I've watched some of the, the League of Legends stuff. Um, I watched, uh, you know, part of a Dota. Uh, I think I actually watched Heroes of the Storm when they had it on ESPN last year, the Heroes of the Dorm college one that they did. Mm-hmm. Just because I wanted to support that being on TV, um, I caught the the about half of the Street Fighter tournament that was on TBS most recently, and I'm definitely going to watch this Rocket League out of principle because I want them to know that it's an okay move. Um, but, but I will say, like, for someone in myself who who never thought esports should really be a thing that tried to exist outside of the internet. I, I love esports, but I think it makes sense on Twitch and places like that. Um, but seeing it on TV and, and them getting the right people in place, I totally get it. Like it can make sense on television. Mm-hmm. I, I just think you've got to find the right games to do it with. I think fighting games are perfect uh, because anyone can play and most people have played some sort of fighting game. Yeah. So even though you're not good at Street Fighter and you don't understand it at the high level, when two guys are playing and the announcers are so excited about what they just saw and they can explain to you why that's a rare move or why that's so hard to do, I think it's easy for you to get excited. Um, but it all goes back to who they have on, on you know, not, not unlike uh, the sports you watch. The broadcasters are important. Your color commentators are important. Those people that get you hyped up for the moment and when you hear their excitement and their voice is breaking because they're yelling so loud because somebody just did like something amazing, mm-hmm. that brings you in. And I think uh, I think the biggest holdup right now are the people who are playing and winning. Those personalities, they're not they're not your NFL players, your NBA players. They're they're not even hockey and hockey te- typically is missing personality. You know, they're they're kind of awkward. They're not used to being in front of a camera. You know, they're maybe not even used to being in front of a crowd of people. It's, it'll take them a while. It, it's going to take the, the people to understand that they, they're going to need a, a character. They're going to need uh, a story behind them, and it's going to be it's going to be ESPN's, TBS's, Twitch, Facebook, uh, NBC's. It's going to be their job to market these people and show their story, show them at home where they came from, build them up, get pe- get the fans involved in their story. Right, that backstory, I agree, it's huge, and, and you don't get much of it no. in, in most of the esports that, that I've watched. But what I also think they have to do is they have to sit these these kids down, because let's face it, that's mostly what they are, kids. Yeah. They're young. They need to set them down, and they need to say, like, hey, part of your celebrity is going to be you. You know, it's not just that you win. Part of it comes from that, but part of it's going to be you. Mm-hmm. Um, some some people need to be healed. Some people need to be hated. Yeah. You've got to have a balance, and I think it's up to these these big platforms to set these kids down and say, "Hey, let's for you to get to the next level, for us to ratchet this thing up, like you have to you have to lean into it a little bit, and and get away from the stereotypes because you know I work in the industry of people who who you know, especially in, in my local area, don't play a lot of video games. Yeah. So for them, gamers is still that that chubby kid in his mom's basement with Cheeto dust and Code Red sitting beside him. And you've got to, we've got to break that mold, I think, for esports to catch on. Yeah, and also I think they're, the TV networks are going to be watching the kids and the people that are there. Like, who are we going to invest our time in? Is this someone that's going to be playing this game or is, it, or is this someone that's going to maybe fall out? So it's probably going to take them a few years before they start really investing in a person and their story because you don't know where they're going to be in five years from now or two years from now. Right. And then to circle back to this, the other thing you have to have – besides personality and, and, a, and a good production is you have to have a game that people can understand who have not played that game. So that's why I think fighting games work. When you watch something like Dota or League of Legends, you're like, hey, I don't know what the fuck is happening right now. Mm-hmm. I don't understand any of this. I don't understand the terms they're using. Um, and, and I think that those those things have been around so long and they've done these platforms online for so long, they're not necessarily good about stepping back and explaining to people what it means. Right. Because their viewers have watched all of these, they they watch all of the 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 big stuff. So, you know, when I watched TBS, I thought that's what they were good at at kind of explaining, 
hey, here's why that, that aerial block is so important because you have a two-second window then to counterattack and, you know, things like that where you're, I didn't know that or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and your normal person's not going to. So that's why I think Rocket League is, is such a good fit because at its core, Rocket League is soccer. Yeah. And I think everyone's played soccer at one time in their life. As a little kid, they understand run, kick the ball, put it in this little goal over here. Most people, you're right, have played or like soccer or at least have an understanding of it. And then most people like, understand, or at least have under, or at least enjoy in some aspect a car. Mm-hmm. People like to customize things. They like to make it look like their own. And and Rocket League, I think, is a, is a simple enough concept that after watching two or three minutes of it, you're like, oh, I get it. Those cars are trying to put the ball in the goal. Yep. It aligns pretty close with the kind of things that, that NBC does with your auto racing and with your, you know, your soccer and things like that. Like NBC is already airing those sports. So I think it makes sense to dip your toes into esports with something that's going to be somewhat familiar. Yeah. To people who haven't played. And that's why I said I think the suits understand it. Uh, we're going to call this guy Rob S. because his last name is out of control. He's a senior vice president for NBC Sports Ventures. And, and he goes on to say basically that we looked into a lot of different games and a lot of different genres. Uh, but ultimately, we landed on Rocket League for a number of reasons. Number one, it's growing at a nice clip. We see the audiences uh, continue to grow. And number two, we thought it had some of the same sports DNA uh, to it, which would make it a good fit for us and our audience, our sports-loving audience. It's obviously the sort of soccer mashup with motorsports, which are sports that we exclusively or extensively cover on NBC Sports Networks. And then to kind of follow that up, Sonic's head of esports, Josh Watson, um, he says the low barrier for entry in Rocket League is a big deal because you can watch them play and then go jump in and play it yourself and still have a pretty basic understanding and and, and enjoy that game. And I think they're both right. All of those things are, are why Rocket League makes a good fit for such a big platform. Mm-hmm. You know, even though it's on ES, NBCSN and not like big NBC, like a, this is a huge deal for esports in general. Yeah. And maybe even a bigger deal for Rocket League to get that exposure. You know, it's coming to the Switch. It's on all the other platforms. You're already on PC. You're on Xbox One. You're on PS4. It's everywhere. They've got the toys in stores now. I saw a shirt the other day in, in a store on, on a tweet someone sent out. Like, Rocket League is, is continuing to grow at, at I'm almost going to say, an alarming rate. Mm-hmm. Um, because there are... I, I You know, last night when we jumped on the play, it was 11 o'clock and there was... 80,000 people online. And that's just counting PS4 and PC. Yeah. So you're not even adding in the, the Xbox One numbers and the, and the soon-to-be Switch numbers. I remember when we first started playing it, it sometimes they take a couple minute, a couple seconds for someone to join a lobby. It, it's insane now how fast. And it has spoiled me. We talked about it before, but it has spoiled other multiplayer games for me because it connects so fast. And on an off night, there, there might be 60,000 online. On an off night, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's just crazy how many people are constantly playing that. You jump on prime time seven o'clock at night; they're well over a hundred thousand people most nights. Yeah, and uh, it's crazy. And l- luckily, they've been able to sustain it so far. So I don't know. I look forward to this. Um, we'll we'll announce those dates as it gets a closer. Um, August twenty sixth, twenty seventh. I would say if if you're interested, watch it. If you're not going to be home. And not interested, I would say leave your TV on that station because this only helps esports as a whole. Build a radio. Yeah, let us know what you think about esports. Podcast at gamestitch.com or hit us up on Twitter at game underscore stitch. I'd love to hear because I think it's one of those things that you, you most people fall one way or the other. There's not a lot of in between with esports. So I'd like to hear some, some comments. Um, some other stuff on the docket for. Esports Heroes of the Storm will once again be on ESPN2 coming up and Injustice 2. Um, I think Heroes of the Storm maybe I don't know if that's coming up. I, they may not be not doing another one of those. Injustice 2 is coming up on TBS. It'll follow the same format as they did with Street Fighter. Okay. So same kind of idea there. So check your local listings. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> Next story, and this is kind of an old story, but because of the way we did our E3 coverage, um, we didn't get into anything last week. But IO Interactive is now an independently owned studio. I know. It's going to be interesting how that all pans out. 
Yeah, they the Copenhagen-based studio said that they agreed to a management buyout from Square Enix, um, and they also will retain full rights to Hitman, which is crazy cool. I'll tell you what's strange is why couldn't they work this out before Square Enix went public with the fact that they were going to sell them off? Maybe they didn't think I, about it before that. I feel like it was a bad... I think if you just went to them and say, hey, we're going to sell you, the same conclusion would have happened that, well, we'd like to stay, so we'll just buy our, buy uh, ourselves. Yeah. Instead of just coming out and publicly being like, hey, we're uh, we're going to sell them, and then them scrambling to get money together and... I don't know. It just seems like a bad look for Square Enix that could have been avoided by just sitting down and saying, hey, is this, you know, have you guys ever thought about X, Y, and Z if we let you go? And then, you know, if they say, well, we don't have money, we don't have capital, we're not interested, whatever, then you go public and say, hey, we're selling them off. It just seems weird. It seems cloudy. It does. Um, on how they're going to do it. Um, CEO Hank uh, Abrax, I'm going to go with. He's the CEO of IO Interactive. So this is a watershed moment for IO, IOI. As, as of today, we have complete control over the direction for our studio and the Hitman IP. We're about to forge our own future, and it's incredibly exciting. We're open to opportunities with, the future, with future collaborators and partners to help strengthen us as a studio and ensure we can produce the best games possible for our community. The very first move they did after going independent was making uh, the first part of Hitman totally free. Yeah, which I thought was pretty neat. It is neat, and it also gives people a you know a, a way in because of the way Hitman is episodic and set up that you can, and they're actually on sale right now as part of uh, either the flash sale or the other sale. I can't remember, um, but you you can scoop those up at a discount. But did you, did you know you, what they're? Did you download it or did you go to it? Um, no, I had, uh, and I don't think I've talked about this on the podcast either. But I I red boxed the Hitman. For Xbox One, I don't did I did I talk about this on here? Do you I, remember? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I know I told you off off there. Um, so I downloaded it, got home, was excited to play it. I've been Jones in the play this game, even though I'm bad at stealth. But everyone's like, it's not a stealth game. You're hiding in plain sight. It's different. Let me just tell you, it's a stealth game. <laughs> I got yes, home it with it, was excited, booted it up. Um, in the training mission, which I assume is what they're giving you here for free. Um, before I get too far into this, if you head over to um, hitman.com slash free they have all the details there um, so I'm pretty sure the training mission is probably what you're getting for free and I would love you guys to download it and tell me your experience with it because I'm going to tell you mine real quick and if I've already told this story um, buckle up it's still good I start the game you're agent 47 you're in your, your killer's outfit your assassin's outfit and there's a boat you got to get on there you got to kill some dude on the boat so there's a ramp, two guards standing beside it. I'm like, I'll just walk onto the boat because I'm an idiot. Walk up. They're like, hey, you can't go on this boat, asshole. So I'm like, all right, got to figure something else out. Go to a storage area. I found some dude fixing an electrical panel. I choke him out. I take his, his outfit. I drag his dead body or sleeping body because I didn't kill anybody yet. I drag his sleeping body into the bathroom. I hide him. I'm like, man, I'm good at this. This is my kind of game. Walk right onto the boat right by these bastards that stopped me the first time. Feeling good. I'm like, I got this all figured out. Get on the boat. They're like, hey, here's the guy you need to kill. I'm like, oh, that's no problem. So I kind of go wandering that way, and somebody stops like, hey, you can't be up here. But you're supposed to be fixing stuff or whatever. I'm like, well, damn, I need a different I need a different disguise. So I, I see a police officer, I'm like, or some sort of security. I'm like, that's what I need because they can go anywhere. So I follow this guy around. He ends up going downstairs, and he's doing that thing that people do when they want to get um, murdered from behind where they just stand there and kind of look right and left. He's doing that. I sneak up behind him. Um, I choke him out. I take the cop uniform, and I'm like, man, I'm a pro at this game. I grab him by his ankle, and I'm dragging him, and I'm, I'm just going to store him in this closet here. What I failed to realize is the closet was actually the engine room for the boat, which had about 12 dudes in there working. So I popped the door open, wearing a police outfit, carrying a dude in his boxers by the ankle. <laughs> They flip out. They're telling me to have some respect. What's going on? They're getting authorities. I panic, grab a pipe wrench, and start just nailing folks. Oh, hell. Breaks loose. What I don't realize is that one hit with a pipe wrench kills you. Oh, no. So now now I got body count. I'm stacking up, folks. The game is like, hey, stop killing innocent people. Like, it's flashing. Shit's popping up. Everyone that runs by or says anything, I'm killing. Then the cops come running in. I kill them, too. So I've got like 27 bodies stacked up over here. 
no idea what's going on. I'm panicked. I'm like, ah, this This is a stealth game. I'm bad at it. It's a stealth game. I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. Turned it off. Probably never go back. Um, but I love the way it works. I've watched other people play it, and I think it's so awesome how you can play that game however you want. There's no right or wrong way to do it, and there's a million different options for how you would go after each target. Yeah. But I'm apparently still really bad at those kind of games. I enjoy stealth games. I love Hitman Absolution. I would like to see you jump into this, and I'd like to see how you play it um, to see where I went wrong. Because I thought I was doing a stand-up job until everything went to hell. Yeah, I mean, I downloaded it. I mean, it's pretty easy. I think they did a age verification once you go to hitman.com free, and then you pick which uh, system you're going to play for. You want it for, not to pick PS4, then you hit download it, download it. So I might stream it or something and see how, so you guys can watch it. It'll be interesting, and... We'll announce the date really soon on Twitter, but we have a Game Stitch uh, Live coming up where we're going to do kind of like we did last month and play games. Dan's going to play Life of Black Tiger for half of it, and then I'm going to play something for half of it. We'll all be in the chat, and we'll be talking with each other, so we'll we'll still all be there. Um, there's a chance I might play Hitman for everybody because I know that everybody will get a kick out of that because I'm bad, 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 bad at it. Um, so I may play that and goof off with some different stuff, but uh, keep your eyes on Twitter at Game underscore Stitch for dates and times on that. Um, it will be in June, so sometime next week. Now, did you do you think they got rid of Hitman that they want to sell it because they were so focused on Final Fantasy and the and, Tom, and um, Tomb Raider and all these other games that were they're pushing Kingdom Hearts? I don't, I don't. Th- I think that Square needs to focus on something, and I and I and I don't think it was necessarily that it had to be Final Fantasy. I think they just had too much going on, and they didn't see the value in a company making a Hitman game. And, and there's a lot of unknowns here. I don't know if IO carried all of their license or just the Hitman. I don't know if they got little or tiny ninjas or um, if they took uh, Kane and Lynch with them. I don't know what they got. Yeah. Mini ninjas. Why the fuck do I call it tiny ninjas? <laughs> I don't know because, I mean, uh, the movies that they had out flopped, so they weren't good, so they spent a lot of money on that. Uh, the pit, and I don't know Hitman how Go Square... Do good either. Square Square probably just licensed the the movies now. Hitman Go and Lara Croft Go and stuff. You know that's that's Square. Yeah. Um, but as far as the movies, they probably were okay there. Final Fantasy Fifteen actually turned out to be pretty decent, so you know they're okay there. I don't think they're hemorrh- hemorrhaging or anything like that. I just think they want to focus. They want to make the things that Square makes, and I don't know that those games ever fit into it. And I don't know how much that studio was working on besides Hitman. Mm-hmm. Nah, you know the. Hitman seems to have done really well, the best I can tell, and the episodic model seems to have worked. So it was, it was one of those things that kind of came as a shock because I, I didn't expect them to sell off a company that I thought was doing something that was working really well. Right, I think I was reading it's like their third most profitable franchise that they yeah, had. I just think they wanted to reset, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that either, and I think this is probably the best move for I.O. Um, it's just going to be a little rocky for a little while, and I'm not sure... You know, until you see what all they carried and they talk about it a little more, you know, I assume they got to keep their engine and everything like that. Yeah. You know, any work that had been done on season two, which was already announced, you know, I just don't know. I don't know the, the details enough to know or what they had to pay to get this going, but I'm excited. I think the future mm-hmm. for Hitman is probably bright. It's still a game that I find interesting. It's, it's in that I, I just bad at them. You know, I love the idea of of sneaking around and, and assassinating people and they'll never even know you're there. I'm just so bad at sneaking because I, I get a video game brain where I think I can just run in and do anything. Right. So, uh, new switch game coming from, uh, the let it die publisher, uh, gung ho online entertainment, the publisher of uh suda 51's hack and slash, let it die game. And also the puzzle and dragon series has uh, a game in development for Nintendo switch. Uh, they didn't reveal anything about it, but they did go on to say they've been working on this for four or five years. Damn. And obviously that's, that, that doesn't mean they've been making this game for four or five years. It means they've been kicking around this idea uh, for a long time. And when the Switch was announced, they decided that it would work well on there and be a good fit for it. Um, and, and basically the only other thing they would say about it is it was a, an original action game. So there's not a lot of story here. But they also announced that Let It Die uh, had some new content coming at E3, the Towers of Barbs. Yeah, they've been, a new arena. <clears throat> they've been teasing that. A new area that the players will uh, have to battle their way through along with new gear and enemies. Uh, they have a trailer out for it. 
Um, and the reason I put this story on here is because I know that you play a lot of Let It Die. Yeah, I do. And I wanted to talk about Let It Die and even the free-to-play model and if you think Let It Die is doing it right. Um, and if this this new tower, where, where it kind of fits in the puzzle and just kind of explain what Let It Die is for people. I mean, we talked about it briefly before, but I don't think we've ever really kind of jumped in Let It Die. Um, and it's a pretty substantial, pretty pretty girthy game. Yeah, there's a lot of people that play that uh, from what I've seen when I'm as I'm playing it because it's like a multiplayer, but not really multiplayer. I mean, you do things to other people's levels. You you you'll have people attack you. It's kind of like a my, uh, a manhunt game where you basically right, so the, oh, go ahead. The, the, you have the Ford operating base style thing that happens like in Metal Gear where people can go out and attack your base. Mm-hmm. But that's not really the game. That's no. like a, a side game that you know also takes time. Yep. But then the game is the the manhunt style. Yeah, you're going from level to level, and each level you're going through. You're attacking. You're getting people. You're getting uh, armor, uh, food, weapons, and then you have to. If you once you you're overloaded with stuff, you have to go back to your base, unload it, sell it build your armor up, build your level up, and keep on going from floor to floor to floor to floor. And each floor has different floors you can go up or down. And as you're going through the floor, it expands, expands. And as these last couple of down, uh, updates they did, the first 10 floors have actually, instead of going one through 10 with a couple side ones, there's even more expansion on those first 10. Because I just now got to floor 12. But that's how I play. I mean, I should be like way ahead, but I like to scrounge and, and level all my characters up before I really go through it. And, and the game is, is so deep. It's so it's, you know, procedure, procedurally generated. It's got this roguelike, you know, where you're starting over constantly. Mm-hmm. It's also got these RPG aspects where you're leveling your characters up. But when you're, you're, you know, it's not perma death, but when they die, you either have to start a new character or you have to uh, bring that character back. I mean, there's a lot going on in a free to play game. Yeah. And I also think they, uh, they wrap it up in kind of a nice little package. Um, I like the, you're kind of, I guess you're playing through this video game. You're playing through Let It Die. Yeah, you're basically like it, like a little uh, video game store type place and it's got, got games all around it. And You're like an arcade, yeah. yeah. And you're just playing, it, you're on one of the games and the guy's sitting here telling you, hey, it's time for you to go back in the game. Yeah, Death. Was it like Cousin Death or something? Yeah. What is he? Uncle Death. Uncle Death, yeah. I, I like it. I'm like really off with my things. I call it Tiny Ninjas and Cousin Death. Um, I like I like that character. He's like goofy and silly. I like the dude that's behind him that's playing something uh, that kind of gives you some some tips here and there. Uh, I think the whole idea is neat. I think the execution is is pretty well well mm-hmm. done too. I played the game for a little bit. It's not my kind of game, uh, but I understand the hooks and I can see how people could really spend some time and probably money on a free to play game as as they continue to play this. Yeah, see I like I like playing some of these free to play games because it's a game I if I seen I wouldn't buy. But it's free to play so I've been playing it and I've been enjoying it when I do play it. Now you don't you don't buy it and spend any money though, do you? No. No. You're free to play on on like legit free to play on all of it. Yeah, I I I only have spent a dime on any of the free to play games yet except for no, about, no Rocket League. I I've I've bought several decks at cars on Rocket League, but it's only one. But that's not really free to play. You got it for PlayStation Plus, but it's not yeah. really free to play. Right. What about Guns Up? Do you ever spend any money on there? No. Never spent a dime. Yeah. Or so even, even the... Star Trek Online, never spent a dime on it. Do you see the uh, Guns Up stuff is on sale right now? Yeah. I know. I thought about it. I saw it when I uploaded this morning and did my normal just check in. I, I wondered if you were going to maybe buy one of those. I don't know. Um, let's move on from that. Let us know again what you think of Let It Die or if you haven't checked it out, try it. I, I think that's a game that people can have fun with. Um, and if not, you're not out anything. Oh. But don't be scared of these free to play games. I, I think the when you hear free to play, you think, oh, it's shitty. Everything's behind a paywall. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But these games aren't shitty. These games are, you know, they're putting tons of money and man hours into these games. Mm-hmm. And there's some really good games there. And if you can. If you can sit down, take the time to try them and go through them, I think that you'll find some that you're pleasantly surprised with. Well, I was going. Oh, we go going back to the the game that's going to be coming out for the Switch. It's going to be interesting to see what they do because Gung Ho has made all kinds of crazy games over the years. Because yeah, so Gung Ho's publishing this, and 
you're right. You don't have a feel for what it's going to be when you you know the two I just named were puzzles, puzzles and dragon series, mm-hmm. and let it die. They are in different universes. Oh yeah. So this game could land anywhere uh, in the middle of that, and I'm shocked that it's not Puzzle and Dragons. People are you know are hot on those. I'm surprised they're not doing one for Switch, and maybe they are. But for this to be a um, a new action game, original action game, there's really no telling what it could be. I wonder if it's going to be because if it's a Switch and they, it's more like geared towards the Japanese with the anime, like the game they did that was a Grandia and Lunar Games, how those looked. I wonder if it's going to be more something like along the lines of those type of games. I mean, it could be. They said that the different ways of playing uh, made the Switch seem like a good fit. So uh, that makes me feel like it's definitely something that will have maybe multiplayer components, whether that be co-op or online, and, um, or or that there would be a reason to want to play it mobile and not just be stuck to the TV. Because I don't, you know, the Switch. Uh, go ahead. No, no, uh, go ahead. I was going to say something about Let It Die. But the Switch really does give you the the freedom to to take in games differently, and I think developers do have to think about that. You know, if you're making a game that you feel like someone has to sit down in front of a TV and 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 give all their attention to, I don't know that the Switch is a good home for that. Mm-hmm. And you know, if it's just a port, then that's maybe one thing. But you know, if you're developing a new IP that requires that kind of attention, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a good fit for that. But if you're making something where I can enjoy it at home when I can give it attention, but also enjoying it when I'm riding in a car and enjoying it when I'm on break at work or something like that. Like, the Switch is absolutely a perfect home. Yeah, it's at- and I think developers are thinking about that. Yeah, that's why I don't think the game is going to be a Let It Die type game. It's going to be more along the lines of that Grandia game. It's going to be more yeah. cartoonish. I mean, there are some limits with the Switch, too, on what it can do graphically and and how things run, you know, we talked about with Rocket League that they're they're knocking it down to 720, which is fine because they've locked in the 60 frames, which is what is important. Um, and they've also said they're going to have to make other mm-hmm. uh, graphical sacrifices. Now, what those I assume that those are going to be tied to like your uh, some of your black market uh, decals and things like that that are animated. I assume it's going to be tied to those kind of things. Yeah. Um, but you know, they haven't announced that yet. Uh, so, what were you going to say about Let It Die? No, I, I, I said it. I don't think it's okay. going to be that type of game. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, Xbox One's finally getting broken age, and this is not much of a story, uh, except the fact that the Kickstarter finished back in 2012. In 2014, it launched on PC, and in 2015, the entire game was released on PS4, Vita, iOS, Android, and even Ouya. Ooh. Five years later, after it was on the Ouya from uh, its crowdfunding campaign. Uh, so five years after the crowdfunding, not after it was on the Ouya, it's available on Xbox One. And I really just wanted to bring this story up because I, I, what's the point? It's like you're late. What's what's the point of, of Double Fine spending the money to bring this to Xbox One five years after the Kickstarter? Um, it's been on Ouya. That's, not, that's a dead platform. It's on Android. It's on iOS. People had a chance to play this game if they wanted to play it. I don't understand the investment here, um, unless Microsoft just tossed you some bones to bring this. Unless they just handed you some coin and said, "Go ahead and bring Broken Age." I do not understand this. I think it's very odd. But I thought I'd let everybody know it's coming out. It's going to be twenty dollars. You can still go buy it on iOS and Android right now for five bucks, though. I mean, people like that game. I mean, it's scored really high. I mean, they do have a following. So I- Broken Age is a fine game. I agree. It's a good game. People should play it. But if you could play it for five dollars, you could play it for twenty dollars. Right. Yeah. I'd rather buy it for five dollars on my Android tablet. Yeah. And uh, pay for twenty on a game system. I'm not a banker. I'm not. I'm not anyone's financial advisor. But if you could buy a game for five instead of twenty, you should do that. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a better choice. Um, and especially if you're playing with something like an Android tablet that you hook a controller up to, you can have pretty much the same experience here. Mm-hmm. Odd story. Uh, the pirate ship combat game, Skull and Bones, we talked about. It showed off at UBZ3 conference. Um, it looks like the combat from Assassin's Creed. Um, and what they showed off was a 5v5 multiplayer boat battle. Yeah. And a lot of people since then have said, is that all this game is? Which is fun. You know, people like that part of the game, but is that all it is? Um, it would appear that it's not. A Ubisoft representative confirmed 
um, the news to PC Gamer that it would actually have a narrative campaign. They wouldn't give any specifics, um, just that it had one, um, and players will encounter iconic characters and memorable, memorable rival pirates. More details will be shared later. So I don't know if the single-player campaign is just more of the boat battle against NPCs or if it's an actual game more than just ship fighting. Yeah, I think it's going to be something like how the Assassin's Creed had it where you just go around, you do sh- different ship battles to build your your ships up so you can take them into multiplayer. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. They also said that the competitive mode showed off at E3 is just the tip of the iceberg, which I think is uh, ironic phrasing for a boat game. Yeah, that's, that's kind of good. Uh, yeah. um, good word on pun there. Yeah, good, good, good work, Yubi, a Yubi representative. Mm-hmm. I guess thou shall not be named because there's no name in this article. Now you did sign up for the um, beta, didn't you? I did sign up for the beta. Uh, I've actually got. I've had some people ask me since Skull and Bones is coming out on. Um, on multi-platform, if that had in some way uh, filled the void of um, Sea of Thieves and that that would be my pirate game and I would just like to clear everything, all the, you know, put all my cards on the table, it, to me these are way different games. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, sea of Thieves is wacky, it's co-op, it's fun, um, it's not serious from what I can tell. Mm-hmm. And Skull and Bones is the total opposite. It looks very serious. It looks very um, don't fuck up, especially when you're playing with other people. Like, don't mess me up here. It seems like I, people are going to get upset at that game. Um, like, people are going to take it very competitive. Like, there's going to be skill that I'm not willing to put in. Um, so, to me, they're not the same thing. And if you ask me which one I was more excited about, it would be Sea of Thieves all day long. You can shoot yourself out of a fucking cannon. Oh, yeah. see if these. Yeah, and see, Skull and Bones actually has, their, their, I mean, was that Assassin's Creed? It has got a pirate game on your mobile device you can play just like the way what they showed on Skull and Bones. You oh, get really? the ship and you go around, you can do all the normal set like you did in Assassin's Creed. It's interesting. You know, I, I think it's I think it's cool. Like I said, I, I hope it's successful. It looked good, obviously. I love the idea that the other people could protect you and throw their boats in front of the cannon fire and, you know, different things like that. I think, it, I think it's a, a neat idea. I just, I want the whimsical fun and the goofing off of Sea of Thieves. I don't want to always be serious. And I think with the way I play Rocket League and how many hours we've invested, it, it it's kind of serious now when we play Rocket League and, now GTA is always good to jump back into, but sometimes mm-hmm. I just want to do something different. I think Sea of Thieves is is that different, and I also I need something to desperately make me turn my Xbox One on. Yeah. So, and actually talking to Thomas Barfield last night, he is so pumped for Sea of Thieves. He is planning on getting an Xbox One at launch of Sea of Thieves. Oh wow! Now he wants to he wants to play other games, but Sea of Thieves seems like it's going to be the one that gets him to pull the trigger. And I think it speaks volumes for those kind of games because a lot of people uh, have counted Sea of Thieves out when it was first announced, but as it's continued on and picked up steam, I'm hearing a lot of chatter about that game. It looks fun. It makes me think that wish I did have an Xbox One or thought about getting one just for that. Yeah, and it's being developed by Rare, so you know it's going to have that fun factor. You know, they they have that Nintendo feel to me. I'm coming from that old, you know, the back-in-the-day uh, Banjo Kazooie type games, you know. I, I think I'm excited about this, mm-hmm. and they still haven't given a date for it. I think that's okay. I know it's irritating. You want it to come out now, but let them take their time, make it fun. You know, you take something like that, and then we're we're going to plan on playing Fortnite and me still playing Rocket League. I mean, we could have some really fun community nights oh, yeah, uh, coming up in the future, and you know, ultimately that's what I want is a bunch of people all jumping in chat together, all breaking out into smaller chats as they all go play different games together. Um, and just kind of a fun group of, of people who just, you know, work hard, but also want to come home and play hard, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, this last story is kind of a fun one. Um, following the success of previous marathons and classic TV shows on Twitch, they've got another. Mystery Science Theater 3000 is coming up next. Uh, beginning Monday, June 26th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. The show will run for six days. The marathon will consist of 38 episodes spanning the show's run from 1989 to 1997. Uh, 
so it is leaving out 1998, um, which, you know, do what you want with that. You'll be able to watch along, uh, along through the Shout Factory TV channel, uh, which later, later this year will actually um, be showing marathons of the, or which uh, later this year will also uh, be home to another unspecified show. So they've got something else planned in the future. Previous marathons on Twitch have included The Joy of Painting, Power Rangers, and most recently, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Um, I did a little bit of the Power Rangers, but I got super deep in The Joy of Painting. I went full on in, on the Bob Ross when it was on Twitch. And I'm probably going to go pretty hard on Mystery Science Theater, too. Yeah, see, I never watched Mystery Science Theater. When that came out at that time, I was like middle school and high school, so I missed out on all that. I was too busy dealing with sports after school and I, I miss out on so much TV during those years. I'm, I wonder if it will translate to you if you try to watch one now. Yeah, it probably would. Uh, I don't know if it'll hold up. You know, part of the charm is, you know, is remembering the show and the characters and just the feeling and, you know, like I watched it with my dad. So there's some of that too. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think the jokes still work. I think it holds up because they're already watching a shitty movie. Um, so I think it'll hold up fine. I just don't know that the humor will hold up as well, especially if there's no nostalgia there for you. Yeah, I think it's neat that Twitch is actually doing TV shows instead of just gaming. Yeah. I think it's cool that they allow this and apparently um, embrace it. Yeah. Uh, again, Monday, June 26th, so the day this podcast comes out, potentially. Not potentially. No, we're the day be- this podcast comes out. Yeah, we're going to be head- going head-on-head head with them. Yeah, we'll compete against Mystery Science Theater. Or you could watch us at the same time. I know. You could listen to us and watch them overload your brain. Uh, that's all we have for news. Did you have anything for news? No, nothing. Awesome. Uh, let's jump into Gone But Not Forgotten, where we reach back in our gaming past. We dust off an old gym for you. It was supposed to be my turn, but I thought, hey, special guest, special time, special friend. Let's let him do a special Gone But Not Forgotten. Okay, and my uh, Gone But Not Forgotten is a game that came out on PlayStation 2. Uh, some of you guys probably never even heard of the game, but I borrowed the game from a friend of mine, and I really enjoy it. It's called Shadow Hearts. I remember Shadow Hearts. Yeah, I really enjoyed that game because it was a game that – it was the first game I ever played that where you played through, and every decision you made in the game affected the way the game panned out. So as you're playing along the story of the guy who's searching for his girlfriend or the girl – at every thing he did determine whether or not he was going to find his girl at the end of the game, dead or alive or find this person. It, it just made me want to go back. I played that game, I think eight or nine times, just try to, to get different endings. And I really enjoyed that game. There's more of a puzzle in game, but not, no, no action, no punching, kicking, but I had fun with that game. Came out in 2001, huh? That's a yeah. deep cut. Yeah, old school. A, a guy I worked with, uh, he was like, man, you should try this game out. It's called Shadow Hearts. I'm like, what? He's like, dude, it's a new type of game. Try it out. So I tried it, and I liked it. I definitely never played it, but you know, back when I was working at GameStop, we still carried PS2 games. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember this cover very well, but I've never played that game. And it said, yeah, I, I don't know if it would hold up, but I think if they did a game like that today, I think people would enjoy that game, especially where you're that people like to get multiple endings, and I think this game had like seven or eight endings. As long as they're happy. Mm-hmm. That's this week's Gone But Not Forgotten. Check it out on YouTube. If you can find a copy and you still have your PS2, maybe try the game. Let us know. If you have a Gone But Not Forgotten for us, hit us up on Twitter at Game underscore Stitch or email podcast at GameStitch, GameStitch.com using hashtag GBNF so we know what the hell you're talking about. Um... Let me do a quick check of the Twitter. I want to think we had a question on here. I should have pulled it ahead of time. I will say this is normally Dan's job, though. Uh, my bad. I should have filled in for Dan. Sorry, Dan. I missed that play. So, Dan got shit-faced. I forgot to do this. You didn't know. Um, so, we we don't have it pulled. So, I'm just going to scroll back a little bit. A lot of let it die, or a lot of, excuse me, a lot of Fortnite talk on, on the Game Stitch uh uh, Twitter right now, which is good because that game's getting pretty close in early access for for the consoles. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. I swear there was something here. Mm-hmm. 
Not seeing it. Uh, Garrett Wade sent us something about Ninja uh, Ninja Theory's game Hellblade, which is the reason he decided to get a PS4. Um, more Fortnite talk. Some teases on uh, Cooking with Dan if you check our Twitter. Super excited for that. Maybe not. Why? I just was positive there was something on there. Well, there might have been one, and maybe the person deleted it. Maybe I just missed it. Who knows? Anyways, hit us up on there if you have questions. If I missed it, sorry. Uh, big shout-out to Thomas Barfield and Garrett Wade for supporting us on the shout-out tier. Um, I didn't see any shout-outs, so I will now assign both of them new shout-outs of my choosing. So Thomas is going to shout-out uh, Rocket League because he just recently purchased Rocket League but has not started playing it. Oh, uh, Okay. Um, and I don't think he's even downloaded it yet because he's he's still uh, you know he's not where he's got the internet to get it. Um, maybe he hasn't bought it yet. The, he's going to buy it okay. before he has bought it. So his shout out is Rocket League. Um, it's now his favorite game of all time, <laughs> and he's excited to have finally got in there and started playing it. Now, Garrett, I'm gonna give I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little clo- the cards a little closer on this one. Um, his shout out's gonna be for Hellblade. If you haven't seen the new Hellblade. Uh, developed by Ninja Theory for PS4. Go watch it. It's freaky as fuck, and it's something he's been super excited about. Um, so I'm going to make that his shout-out. And both of them, I'm going to give a, a a comma and then a congratulations, Ryan, for winning the E3 battle as part of their shout-outs. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Congratulations on that. Yeah, you saw it because you did it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I did yeah, do that. That's right. So you saw it first, maybe even. Um, I don't really but see yeah, it. So, so shout out to uh, Hellblade, Rocket League, and me. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Garrett. Thank you. If you want your shout out read on here, all you got to do is subscribe at the ten dollar tier, and then you also have to give us a shout out to read, or I'll give you one. I'll make one up. I went pretty relaxed this week. I'll get pretty crazy if we don't start getting some shout outs, and uh, I'll let you shout out things that you probably don't love. That's okay too. Really, they'll mostly be things I like. Mm-hmm. Which is. I think maybe maybe that's all right. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for. Uh, I think we've decided to combine the. Uh, I talked about it a little bit earlier. We've combined uh, Game Stitch Live and Dan's playthrough of Life of Black Tiger, and we'll do those in one two birds one stone situation. Um, so for thirty minutes, he's going to play through that game. I'm going to be in the chat talking. I'll also be watching the chat on uh, Twitter or YouTube or Twitch or YouTube, whichever we decide to use there. Um, I'll be in the chat there engaging with people or, and, and me and Dan will be talking. Uh, once we finish that, I'm going to play something for 30 minutes. Maybe Hitman. Maybe I'll bounce around and play a couple different games. I haven't decided yet. Um, but we'll probably open that up with Dan playing Black, Life of Black Tiger. Um, and we will have that as a, a breakout video. Since I'm involved, Dan will have to archive it this time mm-hmm. um, instead of having to make himself play through it again. Right. But I figured the full hour, I can't stand to watch that again. That game is so bad. So we're going to shorten it to 30 minutes, and we're going to incorporate that into Game Stitch Live. Um, but at any given time, there'll be somebody to interact, chat, watch the chat, uh, just kind of talk back and forth with you guys, and also uh, we'll have some gameplay, some fun gameplay to watch. So keep your eyes peeled. Like I said, it will be next week. Um, we're just not sure when yet. So we'll let you know as soon as we can and try to give you a little bit of heads up with that. And Going forward, we're going to have a better plan of, of kind of what we're doing in a time frame so you guys can can make plans in advance. And we're sorry it's taken so long, um, but we're going through some changes and some transitions. Uh, we talked about it a little bit in our Patreon newsletter that we sent out, but, you know, with with the, the you know Matt leaving and the, the dynamic changing to a two-person show, and we've got awesome support from uh, Gerald, and there's a couple other you who have expressed interest in doing things uh, with us and and those are all things we want to look into. We just have to get established, get set up, figure out what we're doing. And then as we start bringing those other things in and having other people on and doing different things like that, I think uh, I think there's some exciting stuff in the future. Also, I got a smoker yesterday. Oh, really? So smoking with Ryan could be a show too. Uh-oh. I'm excited about a smoker. I've been wanting a smoker forever. I like smoked meat a lot. Um, and just to get the hate out of the way, I got an electric smoker. Uh, okay. Which, which I know goes against everything that people who smoke believe in. Um, but what I will say is I have consistent temperature, consistent heat, and I don't have to fuck with it. 
And so I went for convenience over um, maybe uh, proper smoking technique. Well, it's a start. I mean, once you get that going, you understand how to use it, you might decide to get a, a real smoker. I don't know. You know, I like the idea of this. You know, propane, you have to watch the heat all the time. I'm always, you know, skeptical about just keeping a propane running all day long. Um, now, charcoal, the real way to to smoke is nice. Uh, that's where you get that deep smoke ring. I like that. But I don't want to have to go out there and keep the coals hot and do all that shit. I'm not built for that. Mm-hmm. I want to set it and forget it. And with the electric one, I can do that. I set a timer. It'll automatically cut itself off. I have a remote from inside the air conditioning that I can monitor temperature inside me, temperature, all that stuff without doing any work. Um, got a pretty decent deal on it. So I'm excited about that. I came home last night, got it all set up. I seasoned it. It t- You know, you have to do a, a dry run through basically. Um, and I will smoke my first meat today. Uh-oh. So keep your uh, keep your ears open next week. I'll tell you about my smoking experience. Definitely have fun playing with the meat. Yeah, I like to smoke a good meat. Um, I'm starting small with sausage. Oh. I felt like that's a good entry point. I also have uh, uh, some chicken I'm going to do. So I'm going to start there. Um, I don't want to do brisket or anything until I work my way up to that. Right, yeah, I guess um, the small sausage definitely will start their way to, to get you loosened up to for the bigger stuff. And, it, and it's something I'm familiar with, too. Mm-hmm. You know, so I haven't spent time with small, so smaller sausages throughout my life. Yes. Uh, be sure to follow us on the social media. Like, again, we're at game underscore stitch. I am at podcast Ryan. Dan, who is drunk, is at shirtless Dan. And Gerald is at Hoffin Show, but that's not how he says it, but it's not important. Because it's Hoffman Show. If you say so. At a certain point, you just have to embrace the people, and you have to go by that yeah. instead of the way that you say it. The way I said it has been the way it's, it's been for years. You guys are the ones but it's, just changed it. But it's called on, though. It's called on. I know. You guys changed it. Right. So they, at a certain point, you just embrace that, and you're like, you know what? That's what it is now. The way that it was, be damned. From now on, it's Hoffman Show. Because <laughs> it makes me think of David Hasselhoff every time. Yeah. And I like that. And see, I didn't. When I decided to do that, I did not even think of the David Hasselhoff. You never thought of Hoffman Show. No. Nope. Well, because it's not Hoffman Show to you. No, it's not. It's it's Ho F and Show, right? Yes, that was my license plate on my Nissan Sentra that I had. But Hoffman Show is so much better. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just see I see David Hasselhoff like showing up, like he's Hoffman and showing. Well, I mean, the Nissan did have the Knight Rider kit on it, so I had the little flashing light going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Just think think about embracing the change. Because I think people that listen to this podcast, they exclusively know you as Hoffman Show. They don't ever say it the other way because we never say it the other way. Yeah. So think about it. Yeah, I'm waiting to see when I, we start talking to, in the community with the other people if they're going to call me Hoffman Show or, or Gerald. They will or, call you Hoffman Show. Yeah. They might go with Gerald sometimes using... Uh, and and people who have played games with me know I don't like to use your PSN or your Xbox. Like, I use your Christian name if I have it. Mm-hmm. So when we're in, I don't like to, you know, I'm not going to say Yo Hoffman Show. I'm going to call you Gerald. And same thing for our community. You know, I've played with uh, or or been in chat with, I know, Thomas and, and Garrett recently. And same thing. I use their real names. I'm not about I'm not about the world where we use nicknames for each other. We're adults. Uh, we're calling each other by our real names because we're real friends, and I don't want to pretend like uh, uh, these people are just acquaintances. These are these are my friends. You know, our community is, is you know those are those people are uh, friends to me just like you are and just like Dan is, and uh, we we use names around here. Yeah. So it'll be interesting, but I I will allow people to call you Hoffman Show, acceptable as your name. That's replaceable with Gerald, so I'll allow that. Okay. Because I want it to stick, and enough people have to do it for you to just to give up and say fuck it. That's what it is. So that's your new goal in life. Is that, is that a Patreon just, award that reward we should put on there? We should we should put a reward tier that you'll just give up and go with with Hoffman Show at a certain <laughs> point. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Uh, remember, you can check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash game stitch. We do have some new stuff coming with that. I know that we've said for the last couple of weeks we have new stuff coming. We're really close to making some of those announcements, and we're very close to changing um, some things for you guys. So. Uh, bear with us. You know, that we, we knew this transition was coming. We're making it, I think, pretty smoothly. Um, but there's still a few more bumps in the road until we get everything ironed out. And, and uh, especially with Game Stitch Live, which is a show that you guys support, I think we're going to do something that's much more user-friendly with that. And we're also going to keep a live aspect going um, so that you don't miss out on that. I just think we have to finalize some, some deets about that before we're ready to talk about it. 
any uh any final goodbyes anything you want to say no thank you for having me on today you're very welcome thanks for being here um if if we're waiting on dan we'd still be waiting oh yeah but you know dan being the responsible adult that he is he let us know ahead of time hey probably not going to make it um, so we were able to uh, figure something out, and you were gracious enough to be on and uh, keep this a trainer rolling. Um, and I know that, that, that there's a few other people that have reached out to me about being on. Like I said, logistically, we just gotta we gotta get set up, get figured out how we're doing things, and then we'll definitely look into some of that uh, because I think we have an awesome community, and I think some of you guys would would um, would be fun to have on from time to time. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's it. It's been a good podcast. I think we talked about. I tried to pull news that I felt like uh, would fit you a little bit. Yeah, no, I kind of noticed that when I read that the newsletter. Yeah, that's 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 one of the things that you do when you, uh, or what I do as, as uh, the the news procurement department is. I, I try to pull stories that I feel like will get a little talk. And it was it was kind of fun this week to pull stories uh, that I that you and I were going to talk about versus stories that. That, that Dan and I would have talked about. So there's some stories on here I would not have pulled if Dan was here and some stuff that I um, would have pulled if Dan was here. So it's kind of fun to do it differently and, and prepare for a show with you. Um, so I thought that was a good time. Uh, let us know what you guys think of it. And uh, keep on uh, keep on keeping on. Dan likes to say that sometimes too. And since he's not here, I'll throw that out there for him. We miss keep you, Dan. Keep on keeping on. We do miss you. Hopefully he had an okay night. Sound like it went well. And uh, he should be back next week, same time, same place. This has been episode 232. Be sure to tell your friends about it, rate it, uh, love it, hug on it, touch it, um, share it. Remember, you can't tell too many people about us. There's, it's not possible. Um, and if your mouth doesn't work, you can head over to iTunes and leave us a rating over there because that helps people find this podcast too. Uh, you guys are a kick-ass community, and we appreciate you. Good night. Good night. Good night.